Hello, good evening, and welcome to the Business of Property. I'm your host, Cheryl Leong from Property Development Australia. I begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet and pay my respects to elders past and present. I extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people here today. So at the Business of Property, we interview superstar guests in the property development space, share their expertise, their deals, their stories to help empower, build and grow our community of developers. So hello, Facebook land, YouTube and LinkedIn. Give me a shout out if you're here with us today in the comments section. So our guest today, Tony Meredith, does not need a huge introduction because he is no stranger to the business of property. In fact, it was probably about three years ago, Tony and I first launched our first business of property session together. Um, and Tony's not here to stand up for himself, but I believe he walked away from me after that not long. <laughs> <laughs> jokes jokes aside but i love to have tony um join me today on the business of property dance floor because we are talking deals 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 and finding and building your deal finding machine um property developers i'm sure that is the thing that you um really want to know more about so without further ado tony please join me Hello, Cheryl. Hello, everyone. Here I am again. It's exciting. Uh, and I didn't um, want to walk away <laughs> from you, Cheryl. Let me just clarify nice and early. <laughs> no, no, you didn't. We, 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 we decided that we would do our own thing. No, it's not about you or not about me. But here we are again, as yeah. always. Right? We, we, are. we were just saying off air that last time I was here was back in January. And I was uh, in the middle of having COVID. So uh, I'm up, I'm better, uh, I'm, I'm out and about. So it's great to be here and I'm, I'm pleased that I've got full health and, and ready to give to your audience tonight. It's great to have you here and good to know that you are you are well. So for those of you who do not know Tony, and, and if you don't, you know, you've really been hiding somewhere, probably in isolation or in lockdown. So, you know, I understand. But Tony... Tell us a little bit about your background in, in, in property and in development um, so well, that we yeah. can get a bit of context around your experience in this space. Yeah, absolutely, because a lot of the posts that I do here are around mindset, and coaching and whatnot, so people won't know that I'm actually involved in property myself. So my journey started in property, in fact, many, many years ago. So back in 2001, my wife and I bought our very first property. We went on to buy a few others, did a few renovations. Some worked, some were disasters. But property development specifically, I did a course at the end of 2015. I know a few of your viewers here were in the same course as me. Uh, so we had a wonderful group of people back then. And I bought my first project, a one into two, in 2000, start of 2016, and then went on to do another. And I'm currently in a project an hour north of Brisbane. It's two hectares. We're slowly working our way through it. Uh, it's taking its time, but uh, we're getting there ever so slowly. So... I'm involved in property development. In fact, I'm up to my neck in it, to be honest. And uh, so when I do my posts, whilst, yes, it might come from a mindset perspective, uh, but I actually, uh, you know, I have skin in the game, so to speak. Uh, look, I'm a business coach. So, you know, so today uh, I've got a coaching business, Tony Meredith Coaching, and about a third of my clients come from people in property and about two-thirds of my clients come from people in, in business, small business, medium-sized business specifically. Yeah, but the, the thing that actually, I want two things. We want to be able to celebrate it. Um, so number one, Tony, before we came online, you said it was it's your four-year anniversary, not wedding anniversary, right? No, no, no. What's the anniversary for? T tomorrow is four years since I left employment and started full self-employment. So full-time, on my own doing this uh doing other things as well in the last four years so tomorrow's the four-year anniversary that i walked away from a job so i was actually just sitting here preparing a, a post for linkedin don't normally do many of the social media posts even though um, my business does a lot of posts i don't normally write them i've got my team that do it but this one's particularly special so i was just taking a few moments before i came on air to to craft what i'm going to write tomorrow but yeah four years it's amazing you know time flies uh Absolutely. I wouldn't say that it's all been beer and skittles, Cheryl. We're having a chat about it, and look, there's certainly been there's certainly been heaps of ups, uh, but there's been plenty of downs as well. And you know, being a coach going through COVID has certainly had its fair share of challenges. But 
I was just reflecting that each and every day I get out of bed the same way, uh, regardless of what's going on. And I've taught myself a process, a method. I've got a routine that I just bound out of bed and get into it. Life throws a whole lot of things my way, but I'm, I'm able to, to deal with the, to deal with most of them. Yeah, and, and so congratulations, Tony. You. And, you know, I I mean, I've known you for I think three, three and a bit years now, yeah. and, and and absolutely you're right. It's been <laughs> it's been quite a roller, roller coaster for every so many aspects of your of your life, um, and it's great to be able to see. You know, like you said, we talk about property and whether you're coaching property or business. We want to be able to look at property and development as a business. Hmm. And that's why we're here today because like business, you know, having clients or having having deals, sorry, more so deals like, like business, having deals and consistent pipeline of deals to be able to fuel your, your development pipeline is hmm. absolutely crucial to your development business. Oh, look, absolutely. If you go to any business, and I was thinking about an example that I could share with people, the most simple example that I could share with people is um, uh, is Macca's. You know, McDonald's is run by, uh, you know, 17-year-old kids. They're running multi-million dollar businesses and they're able to do it because their systems and processes. I met my wife at, at McDonald's many years ago, separate story, but that's how I know firsthand how the systems and, and processes work in McDonald's. And so they do it so beautifully. And, and regardless of what you think of the nutritional value of the food, but the systems, the process, the training, et cetera, is something that we can all take uh, on board and incorporate in our own business. And you and I started this very uh, this very podcast or this very uh, show, you know, some three and a half years ago, and it was purely on the back of we saw people who were treating property like a hobby. And you and I had a, had a catch-up. We had a few catch-ups, and we said, you know what, there's a real opportunity here to get people to start to think about this like a business and deal finding is no different. You know, when you want to go and find deals, you want to think about it like uh, a business and we're going to go into that a whole lot more depth uh, over the next hour or so. Yeah, absolutely. And like you you touched on very, very briefly, you coach uh, property developers in, and, and what are the main things that you'll find? What's the number one pain point that you find with property developers oh, and deals? Sure. So the number one pain point is that people aren't clear. So they're not clear on what it is that they're going for. They know that they want to go and create some wealth in property, uh, but they haven't really thought specifically about that. And they haven't then built the plan in between the two. So that's a big one. Uh, the other comes around limiting beliefs, the stories that we're telling ourselves, the, the fears of failure, uh, the fear of being criticised by other people uh, and giving up just giving up, just saying it's all too hard, it's not for me, and having a scarce mindset uh, as opposed to a growth mindset. So they're the big things, Cheryl, that keep coming up. There's some other minor things that come up, but really the, the big ones are that you know, people aren't truly um, clear on yeah. what, what they're even doing in the first place, what they want in the first place. Okay, so you've got some, you've got some fans here uh, commenting, Tony. Superstar coach, so grateful for Tony. Hi, Tony, hello. No one said hello to me yet. It'll come. It'll come. We're um, still so going to know. Because I sent mum the links. I'm so delighted that she's found the link, Cheryl, <laughs> and she's uh, commenting away. Excellent. Fantastic. So we've got the mind. That's the mindset side of things. So it, is this, you know, how do we get really clear on what we're looking for? Because we're not just talking about the mechanics of deal finding. We're going back to the, the core foundations of, you know, what well, I remember. I'm, with. Yeah, I've got a number of phases, Cheryl. And so the first phase, I call it the personal phase. And the personal phase is about understanding why you want to do it in the first place. So within development or within renovation or within roomy accommodation, my view is that the hardest part of either of those strategies uh, is finding a profitable deal. You can find a deal. There's deals everywhere. But can you find a profitable deal? And ultimately, we're, we're doing it because we want to make money. So it's the hardest part, right? There's other bits that are, that are challenging as well. And so it's a case of understanding why do you even want to go and do this in the first place? Because it's challenging. And if you're not clear on what your why is, what your reason is, then you're going to give up. And I see it all too often where people don't have that connectedness to their why, then it all becomes too hard. Yeah, absolutely. And so once, they've, once we've established our, our why, and the reason why we're in property, for example, yeah. 
what's the next step from there? Because I'm wanting to, to get to a point where we're starting to talk about the deals because that's what people are like, well. Right. Absolutely. So, yeah. So, what in. Well, so it depends on where you're at. But, look, the big one is to get clear on your strategy. Right, again, go back to what I said before when you said to me, hey, what are some of the challenges that people experience? Uh, it's about doing heaps of stuff, uh, being uh, all over the place and not being clear on what it is that they're trying to find. So it's all around being narrow-minded, narrow-focused of what it is that you're doing, get clear on the strategy. So uh, every strategy can work. Like we could bring on people here who have been successful in uh, land sub small land subdivision, uh, townhouses, units, uh, you know, co-living, uh, renovating, like every strategy works. It's just not every strategy works in every suburb and not every strategy works in every suburb at the same time. So it's about identifying what's the strategy that's going to resonate with you. And there's a whole range of factors that you do to consider this because some strategies are easier, some are more complex, some take longer, some are shorter. So some are more hands-on, some are outsource to consultants. So you really need to understand what's the right strategy for you. Uh, and then it's also about what's your financial strategy, right? So uh, unless you're going to be doing options, the, the chances are that you're going to be buying the property. So what's your financial strategy as well? So you take the time up front to get clear on what your direction is. Yeah, absolutely. And once we've done that clear on, stra clear on strategy, is this the point we get clear on what the criteria is of the type of property? Absolutely. absolutely. So then it's about doing your research, right? So then it's about the, the research phase is around now starting to figure out, I've got clear on my strategy, which council, because different councils have different town plans. We're very lucky here in Brisbane. Brisbane is, you know, I think it's the biggest uh, council in the Southern Hemisphere. In other parts of the country, you know, councils might have anywhere between 12 and 20 odd suburbs but in uh, brisbane there's 192 190 plus anyway so so brisbane's a bit different but in other um, parts of the country it's about getting clear on a council because each council has slight variations and particularly when you're starting out you don't want to be trying to understand town plans here and town plans there and town plans there because they're all going to be different and so you're just going to confuse yourself you're going to just go around and around in circles and ultimately get really frustrated because you're not making progress so it's about council. Uh, then from there, it's about identifying the suburbs within the council. So even if you've got a council that's, say, got 20 suburbs, still 20 suburbs is too many, right? Because the ultimate objective here is about speed. So we want to be fast from a deal-finding point of view. And how do we get fast? We get fast because we're an area expert, because mm -hmm. we've narrowed down our area, because we know that properties in that street will sell for this and over there they're going to sell for this because even within a suburb, you know, you take any suburb in the country, there'll be uh, parts of the suburb where it's for a principal place of residence. There'll be other parts where it's for renters. Uh, some will be more premium. Others will be lower, uh, you know, socio-demographic or uh, whatever it might be. Just within one suburb, you, 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 there's all these variations. So a property is not going to sell the same. Uh, at every single point across the suburb. So it's about becoming an area expert and the way in which you do that is to, again, narrow your focus. The, the, it's counterintuitive in the sense of that people will say, well, if I cast my net as yes. wide as I possibly can, yes. surely I've got to find something, right? And the reality is that, well, no, you won't because, you, you again, you're going to burn up too much time trying to figure out the price that I need to pay for that particular property. Uh, so it's about really honing and narrow down on, on the, the suburbs that you're going to focus on. Yeah, I, I touched on this a, a, a while ago in a post that I made around um, being an area expert and focusing on a few areas because there's, you know, something that you raised, very, very true, because if you're not an area expert, you're, you're wasting a lot of time mm -hmm. trying to research and understand the planning, um, what, you know, properties are selling for and all of that, and then trying to speak to... So you're almost having to redo all the research again to try to understand them I and mean, if you've got a you know if you've got the benefit of brisbane city council where you're mm. across a whole council well the planning site's not so bad but then the individual suburb breakdown is another is oh my problem. gosh absolutely because again if you're selecting a council say in sydney and it's got 15 suburbs it's not going to take you that long to whittle down to you know three, four, maybe five suburbs where in Brisbane you've got to go through 190 of them, 
right? Now, obviously, yeah. there's some, uh, you know, you might have some price brackets that, that sort of, uh, you know, knock some out quickly, uh, maybe some near the river, north, whatever it might be, but still you've got a lot of suburbs to churn your way through. So uh, whilst, yes, yeah. in one regard, it's great because we know that all of Brisbane is under the one town plan, but then you've also got to go through uh, a lot of suburbs. Yeah, absolutely. So we get clear on, on our locations and all. So why, what, where are people still getting stuck there? Journey? So we've got clear on our criteria of what we're looking for. We know our strategy, but we still get this point where people are going, I can't find, I can't find property. Well, I think well, part, so part of it here, Cheryl, at this point is that right up and it depends on what type of personality you are, right? Uh, in case for those who are just meeting me for the first time, I'm a talker. And so I like to talk to people. I like to meet people. We're talking. I know you're shocked, Cyril. We were talking about it off air where, uh, you know, I like to connect with people, you know, network, etc. cetera. Uh, and so if you're like me, then you want to race straight to that bit. And right now, the bit that we're talking about, the research, the analysis, well, that's behind the computer. That's doing spreadsheets and all this stuff that, quite frankly, for me, is snoozeworthy. However... It's absolutely important and essential to do because if you go and skip a step, then it's going to catch up with you down the track. So it's about recognising. So why do people get stuck? Well, one of them is that, you know, maybe there's at this point that you go, hang on a second, is there a solution for me from a research point of view, like someone like me who doesn't like doing it, but is there someone that can help me do it? And, you know, potentially that's an organisation like yours who can, you know, help from a research and so be the right-hand person to a uh, to a property developer. Yeah, and and I'll touch on that point as well. A, a lot of people that I, I I meet in terms of developers, particularly in this community where people are still probably um, working full time or part time, mm-hmm. so time time tends to be a, a big factor, a big stumbling mm-hmm. stumbling block yep. because you're going I don't have enough time to spend on researching i can only look on realestate.com or domain um everyone's paying paying too much um so how do you how do we how do we get over that stumbling block i know you mentioned you know probably in terms of what we do is is, is we help developers they outsource the the short listing of properties mm-hmm. but what else? I mean, what's the practical thing? You know, because a lot of people are going on realestate.com, online, online um, property searches. Mm-hmm. What are the other options there? Okay, so so let me just touch on time if so um, quickly because you raised it. So for me, I talk about time mastery. So people talk about time management. Those that work with me, uh, and I can see a few of you uh, there. And it wasn't Mum, by the way, who said uh, that comment. Thank you, Vanessa. I really appreciate it. So it was Vanessa who said it, and uh, anyway, a number of others. So thank you so much. So within time, there's two elements that I talk about. So the first element with time is what I call quantity time. So that is, if you want to get going in property, or if you already get going in property, you need to allocate time to do this. Right? It might be five hours, it might be 10 hours, it might be 15. You, whatever your circumstance, you have to allocate time. The second thing with time is what I call quality, quality time. That is now that I've, let's say I've gone and found 10 hours in my week, and here's the thing, 168 hours in any given week. So I've gone and found 10 hours in amongst all the things that I do. Uh, but with that 10 hours, how do I make sure that I'm squeezing every last drop of that 10 hours so that's the quality side of things uh, with with time. So it's important to, you know, how do we go and master time is absolutely critical uh, in this. And if I go back to my journey, like I was getting up at 4 a.m. Uh, in the morning. I did it about 18 or so, maybe a bit longer, actually. I got up uh, at that time today, but but by accident, not by design. But back when I was doing this, because I had a full-time job, I was getting up at 4 a.m. to be able to fit all of these bits and pieces in before I then, you know, take myself off to my day job. So mastering time is essential uh, if you want to create a deal finding machine yeah okay so there's the time aspect so we've sort of addressed that and the next one is I can't find I just can't find the deals They're so where, where, where do I find them so we've gone through we've said uh, we've said suburbs uh, now within the suburbs you want to find uh, properties that meet your criteria so again within a suburb there might be you know there's thousands and thousands of properties but not all of them will meet your criteria so this comes back to what's your strategy 
it really vividly clear around what are the things that I'm looking for. And it's a case of, they said it in the Bible, Cheryl, and that is seek and you shall find, right? And so the clearer that you can be on what it is that you're looking for, then guess what happens? Miraculously, you're actually seeing it everywhere. And in fact, it's more than just, is it a, a biblical phrase? It's actually part of our anatomy. So we have in the base of our, our brain, at the top of our spine, what's called the reticular activating system or the RAS. I'm not sure if your viewers have uh, heard of that. And what it does is that our minds can't possibly compute all of the things that are going on around us. And so your RAS is letting in things that it thinks that you want to have let in and discarding things that it doesn't think are essential. Right, and so the, the best example of this is when you go and get yourself a new car. You might be for a Toyota or a or a, a Mazda or a Ferrari or whatever whatever you whatever the car is, and all of a sudden, you're now seeing Toyotas or Holdens or whatever it is everywhere you go because your Raz is now kicked in. So the same applies when you're finding property. You want to open the Raz up and have it fixate on the things that you want to search for, and guess what? Then all of a sudden you'll be finding them everywhere. So it's about identifying your properties. Look, you touched on what I call uh, the start of a deal attraction phase. And so what that is, is for me, there's five ways at the high level, five ways that you're going to go and find a property, right? So we've gone and done our research, we've gone and done our strategy, all those things, there's five ways. You touched on one of them, which is not my preferred way, and that's online research, right? So the reason why it's not my preferred way is because online research is what I call reactive, not proactive. So that means that when an alert, you might go to realestate.com, set up an alert, you're looking for 800 square meter blocks or whatever the size is in this particular suburb, but you're going to see it with everybody else, right? So you, again, go back to what was the number one objective that I said before around finding deals? Speed. So how do you then beat the other people, uh, beat your competitors, get to it fast enough when you're getting it at the same time as everyone else? So you've got to come up with a strategy to be able to do that. So there's a couple of terrific strategies. So the first one, and again, this is in um, uh, no particular order. The first one is real estate agents. They are your friends. Change your meaning around how you deal with real estate agents. Cheryl, the number of people that I come across that have an absolute fear, uh, bordering on phobia of real estate agents is staggering. Is staggering, right? And so it's about, and I, and I look, Respectfully, I understand it, right? I understand why that's the case, but it's part of my job to help people change the meaning around a real estate agent and recognise they're just people doing their job, uh, representing the vendor, and uh, and they're just out there trying to sell a property and we're out there trying to, to, to buy a property. And when you start to change the meaning that you apply to real estate agents, all of a sudden you'll see them in a very different light. Sorry to interrupt there, Tony. Why? Why do we have this fear yep. of agents? Because they're not big and scary, and well, well, so, so they are to some of us. So it's a fear. Perhaps it's a fear of um, uh, uh, being so their negotiation skills. So remember that a real estate agent is trained, like they are trained, and the, the, the good ones. They are trained, and they are trained, and they are trained. They are trained to overcome objections. They're trained to sell. They're trained to close the sale. Uh, right, they're, they're trained. You know, a lot of us have this uh, this phobia or this this uh, meaning around they're going to outsmart me, right? They they're going to perhaps get me to buy something that I don't want. Uh, they're then you know um, uh, perhaps they're going to be saying things to me that I don't have the answers for. So I have this fear of of maybe uh, you know not dealing with the objections or being rejected, uh, etc. I'm worried if I go and put a low offer in, what they're going to say to me, what they're going to think about me. Uh, all these things. And so when you put all that into a pot and you mix it up, then this is why people have an absolute fear of real estate agents. And, and it is common. Like it is, it has surprised me, you know, since I've got into the coaching side of things four years ago, it really has surprised me the number of people that have this fear. But it's also about recognising that some people, look, go back to what I said before around uh, I don't like the research, I like to get to the talking bit, whereas there's plenty of people who would love doing the research and don't like the talking to you, right? And so it's about recognising that, you know, we're all different, you know, and that's what makes us all uh, special and unique. So uh, it's about how do we then go and firstly change the meaning around the agent, but then also start to develop some skills to build uh, relationships. And this sort of reminds me of the conversation that we had with um, Scott and Vanessa in, in a previous um, yep. 
episode of the business of property where um you know scott scott said really i I like the sort of the the technical side and putting the deals in the in the project management side. Not really, a, you know, a big big talker. Um, whereas Vanessa had a really good sort of a complementary skill, which she's an absolute networker and a connector as well. And so, always look the. I mean, the, the point was is to look for the solutions. If you feel you don't really have um, a, a strong confidence to to speak to people maybe maybe joint venture with someone as well there's always a solution that's the point um no, absolutely so you, you know so you can go and um, upskill yourself uh but if it's something that you know for you really is uh, maybe a bridge too far then you're right then find people who can complement your skills and that's that's all part of business right so in business what you don't want is you don't want to have people who are with you to yes. uh that have the same attributes because what that means is that uh, so i'm not sure if your viewers are, are familiar with say that the disc uh, personality profile what it means is that you've got two people of the same who are you know they might be high d's and they're just charging ahead and they're dominant and they're just making decisions but you haven't got people who are here just slowing them down being steady being more conservative so it's actually important it's it's the yin and the yang right it's about having those complementary skills so that uh, one and one can equal three yeah, absolutely. So um, someone's comment at end of the day, agents want listings uh, also, and it's developers who create a lot of those listings. Very easy to collaborate and get agents working with you. Absolutely. It is. Yeah, absolutely. But again, that's that's changed the meaning, right? So that's about when you change the meaning to this is just another person who is doing their job and how can I, in that instance, how can I collaborate with them? Well, now you don't look at people as being so scary right but it's because we have this fear of agents that really does trip a, a lot of people up particularly early on until they build the confidence yeah so we've talked about online talked about real estate agents building mm -hmm. relationships with them um and what are the what's the next one well just with real estate agents there, there's a couple of key things that i suggest to people to do with real estate agents Building relationships is the first one, and that's around no like, and trust. It's about building a deep relationship, and I get all of my uh, clients, and they'll know every two weeks, every two weeks, every two weeks, and it's about the personal contact, right? I'm really big on personal contact, on building a relationship. Again, mm -hmm. how do I cut through all the noise? How do I make sure that I'm the person that gets that deal as opposed to the other people? Again, how do I um, have that speed? How can I do it quickly? Well, I've got to do things differently. Now, I'm just doing the same as everyone else, then I'm just going to be part of the pack. So I want to differentiate myself. The other way that you can deal with real estate agents is you can potentially get them to go and knock on a few doors for you, right? Mm -hmm. So you build a relationship, but then also leverage them. Go back to the comment that the viewer just said, agents are looking to get listings. Well, let's help them get some listings by saying, well, hey, you know what? Here's five properties that I've identified. I'd love for you to go and knock on that door. Uh, for me, and uh, let's let's see if we can't do a deal. So that's another way that you can de uh, deal with real estate agents. The yeah. next way to build out your deal finding machine is direct. Cut out the agent. Go direct. Cut out the middle person. Go direct to the vendor, uh, and you go direct to them. So the way in which I uh, suggest my clients do that is through letters, uh, and like letter writing is an absolute science right and so it's not just doing a letter and, and hitting and hoping like there is so much involved in letter writing that's one way another way if you're brave enough is go and knock on the door uh so you know you've identified some properties go to the street knock on the door and uh, and have a chat to people directly so uh you know but look again that's not everyone's cup of tea but certainly yeah. the letter writing is my uh, preferred method Absolutely, and and that's something that we get involved in quite quite a bit for for developers, and we've seen some really really extraordinary results because one, you know, when when someone's looking after their project or they're working, they've got a bit of a machine that's happening looking for potential sites for them, short lists, and then sending the letters. Um, so how many, you know, they start then sending letters. Like how many letters does it take to get a deal or how so often I got, yeah so i got a photo um a text from a client of mine uh the other day i'm not sure if uh, she's watching or not she sent me this text she had just gone and printed off twenty thousand letters that is two followed by four zeros right Twenty thousand letters so wow. how many 
how, how many does it take? Well, look, how long's a piece of string, right? But here's the point that uh, when you go and send letters, right, one of the big things I get back from people is, Tony, I went and sent those letters once and it doesn't work. Now, the reality is that when you go and send letters, you're going to get on average a 5% return rate. So if you go and send 100 letters, you're going to get five people come back to you. Perhaps two of them are going to want to just extract a price and maybe the rest of them are, you know, semi, uh, you know, interested in what it is that you've got to say. So at that point, there's only two ways that you can increase the number of responses that you get. So one is send more letters. Now, maybe don't go and send 20,000 letters uh, at once, and, and nor is, is uh, that particular client going to do that. But uh, but send more letters, right? So if, you, if it's a 5% rate of return, then if you go and send 200 letters, now all of a sudden you're getting 10 uh, responses back, right? So you're increasing the volume. The other way, and this is go back to the comment I said a moment ago around the science of uh, letter writing, is that there are so many variables with letter writing. And so by tweaking some of those variables, I can now take my rate of return from 5% to 8%. And if I take it to 8% and then go and send more letters, well, now when I send 200 letters, perhaps I can get 16 responses as opposed to the 10 that I just did a moment ago. And then when you send 500, you know, so on and so forth. So it's about volume, but then it's also about the so, so quantity, but also about the quality as well and really challenging yourself on the different elements of writing a letter. And you also mentioned not just sending one letter, hmm. looking at, I mean, at the end of the day, it's 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 a form of, of marketing. Right? So I it's more than marketing, yeah. Think, but think about it from, so one of the things that I pride myself on, whether I'm coaching, whether I'm meeting people, whatever, is so I always, and perhaps this is my sales training, but I always am thinking about what the other person is thinking, right? What are they thinking? What are they saying? What are they going to do? Think about this when you go and send, uh, uh, let me go back. When someone uses a real estate agent, they've made the decision to use a real estate agent. Now, for those people who've gone and sold a property before, it's a big decision. Like, it's a big psychological decision to go and use a real estate agent. Now, if you are a direct uh, owner, you're on a, a large block of land and you're sitting on your back deck and all of a sudden some developer lobs up and gives you a letter, you, it's a, you haven't gone through the psychology of getting yourself ready to sell. So what happens is we go and send a letter the first time and as a homeowner, I might be ready to sell. I might be happy on my back deck. I love doing the mowing uh, and everything's great. And so hence I take the letter and I throw it in the bin. Now, if you're one of those developers who sends a letter only once and then throws your hands in the air and says, well, this doesn't work, well, I'm sorry, but you're going to miss out. And so back to your original question, which is every two months. So every two months you want to be sending another letter. Two months, two months, two months, two months, two months, two months. Just keep sending letters until you get told uh, to, to send no more letters, right? Uh, and, and the whole idea then is to change up the letters again. Go back to the different elements of letter writing. Don't just keep blasting out the same letter because that's the uh, definition of insanity, right? Doing the same thing and expecting a different outcome. Whereas very, very things, very things, very things. Like you said, it's marketing. Like this is all about marketing and how do I you know, create the urgency or create a reason for that person who's sitting on their back deck to all of a sudden go, you know what, I'm going to call this person, right? Now, that's from a letter point of view, but also then the homeowner's circumstances change. So they mightn't be ready to sell today. They mightn't be ready to sell in two months' time. But in six months' time, they might be ready. Uh, maybe something's happened. Maybe someone needs to relocate. Maybe someone's got crook. Maybe they need some money. Maybe Who knows, right? There's a whole range of reasons as to... Things have changed then. Now, if you just go and send one letter or maybe two, you do it for two months, uh, you're going to miss out down the track when someone's circumstances have changed. Yeah. And I've heard a story. This is this is from my own personal deal. Mm. Um, I, sent, I remember sending some letters out and it was the first lot of letters and there was a particular property that I was really keen to, to secure. It was 100 acres, um, Tony, so it was a big Big block. Big one, and, yeah. And I and I didn't get a response. And I said, Well, okay, I'll make sure that I sent this send the second one. And thankfully the owner rang me the next well the, the next day after they received the yeah. letter. I said, Fantastic. But obviously I, I phrased the letter differently. And I said, Oh, how you know, did you um did you receive the first letter? And they said, No, I didn't. I hadn't received and I didn't we didn't get the first letter at all. This is the first one yeah. I received. 
so it's a it's a clear reminder you know that sometimes people just don't get the first one <laughs> exactly right but again that's also about having the the growth mindset and the never give up attitude you know so i can i can give an example of a client of mine who secured a property and they secured it after sending six letters, a year's worth of letters, and they secured a property, right? Now, most of us will we'll give up. We'll throw our hands in the air and we'll give up. But that person, and again, that comes back to the machine, right? The machine is that this is a process. Let's take all of our emotion, let's put all of our emotion at the door, and let's focus on my process. And when you have a process, when you do things systematically and you just keep doing it and you keep doing it and you keep doing it, and you have the, the faith and the belief that I'm on the right track. I'm on the right track. I'm not there yet, but I'm on the right track and I'm doing all the right things. And I know that I will find that property that's got my name on it. Yeah. So, Tony, what's your suggestion to keep on top of the frequency uh, of, of the letters to begin with? Yep. Track them. Track them. Use, uh, I use a spreadsheet. All my clients uh, get access to the spreadsheet. Spreadsheet, track the letters, track where you send it, track when you send it, track the type of letter that you send. Again, the variabilities within the letter. Track all of those things. Then track track the uh, the, the feedback. So then uh, who rang you back? Uh, who told you uh, don't send any more? Who, told, who wanted to know about the price? You track the interaction. Then track when you send it again. Go and do the same process track it again it's the case of you get what you measure and this mm. applies in business as it does in property you get what you measure so track all the things that you're doing now there's a few reasons why we track a because we want to know where we're at with certain conversations but b you want to make sure that you're doing all the activities and the actions that are taking you to where you want to get to so if you sit there and say, well, oh, gee, I, I don't, oh, I can't find, I'm finding it hard to get a property or I feel like I'm not getting close to a property, go and look at the spreadsheet, have a look at what's happening with your actions. Are your actions aligned to your goal of achieving a property? And what I say to, to my clients is you want to rate yourself. Rate yourself. How's your effort going? Right? Out of 10, with one being low and 10 being high, rate your effort. And if you're being honest with yourself, and your effort is a five or a six out of 10, then I'm sorry, you're not gonna find the property. Like I'm just gonna be, that, it's, that, it's that blunt, right? Whereas if your effort is like, you know what, I'm sending the letters and I'm you know, doing the phone calls and I'm, do, you know, I'm, a, I'm a nine out of 10, you are so close. Yes. Now I'm not saying do it for one week and go, well this bloke, bloke came on Facebook the other week and he said, do that, send these letters and do calls. It's not for one week. Right? It's about do it and do it and do it and keep going and keep going and, and you will get so close to finding that uh, particular property. Absolutely. What's, what's it saying about two feet from gold? It's actually three feet, but I like to two feet even closer. Right. So, 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 so three feet from gold. Well, so, so, sure you know, see, Tony, so we know it. You know why? Because over the years, you and I have got closer, right? So we've got closer to the gold. So we're now, you and I are now two feet away. We started off at three. So where it came from is it came from Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich. Uh, so for those of you who haven't read it, I really encourage you to read it. Look, it's about 90 uh, years old, the book. But the concepts and the principles that Napoleon Hill talks about in that book are just as relevant today as they were back then. Three feet from gold is if, if you think back to when it was written 90 odd years ago uh, about miners and so miners with a hard hat on and they're picking they're you know digging for gold they dig 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 let's say they've gone and dug 97 feet right they're digging this tunnel and they're going no there's no gold here and they give up and and what happens is they don't know that they're that close to their gold like you can't see the gold right but it's about the faith and the belief so they give up they give up three feet from gold and the reality is that most of us uh, at the end of our lives, we'll finish our lives being three feet from gold. Right now, not the people here on Property Development Australia, but the majority of people will finish their lives being three feet from gold. It's incredibly sad. And what that means is that they gave up just short. They didn't realise how close they were. They gave up. Now, here's the kicker. If you knew that you were three feet from gold, then you would keep going, right? Because you know, if I know that I'm three feet from gold, then you'd be, you know, you'd be with your hands, you'd be digging, you'd do whatever you could because you know you're three feet away. You don't know that you're three feet away. 
right? And so that's where the faith and the belief comes in to know that I'm doing the right things, I'm doing my process, and I'm on the right track. And this is a, this is a uh, I call it macro patience, micro activity. So macro patience is be patient for the outcome. Micro activity is do the right things, be incredibly productive with your time, but be patient for the outcome. Yeah. I want to just pinpoint again, there's a few people said, love Napoleon Hill, fantastic principles to apply today. And yeah, and, and, and a century ago. Um, but the, I want to highlight that point you made around, there was something, else, and I've just lost it because I was reading the comments. I'll get, I will, I will get back to it. Um, but, three letters um, from Luke, Luke's three letters from gold. So there, there you are, mate. So Luke's three letters from gold. So that's it. Tomorrow morning, get those three letters out there, and then uh, you'll you'll reach uh, you'll reach your goal. But uh, so I remember, at, I remember what go. it was, sorry, Tony. Before before I forget, it was around that knowing that you know that it's there on the other side. Hmm. There's a difference to actually knowing and having that that sort of almost sort of blind trust and belief. And keeping and, and keeping on track. What's well, right? cool? It's cool. It's, cool. Like, it's not going to happen. I'm not really sure. That sort of vague fog, whereas you sort of go, well, the fog parts, and then you've got you know the pot of gold there. So here's the reality, right? So all of us, we have a conscious mind and a, and a subconscious mind, and this is something I'm going to really uh, get into for those who are going to join me on Saturday, and for those who work with me. Uh, directly you're already aware of this so we have a, a, a conscious mind and a subconscious mind so consciously you might be saying yeah i can do this yeah i can find this property i can do whatever but subconsciously if you've got some doubts right and it's your subconscious uh, mind that uh, if it's got some doubt if it doesn't quite believe right then it's not going to happen for you so this is all around programming or reprogramming your subconscious mind so that with every inch of your being you believe that you can do this thing and you are not only do you believe it you are doing it and you and you are like you can almost reach out and and and, and touch it you know and so that's the absolute belief where you start to have some doubts and then what happens is we get the little voices come in you're not good enough uh you know leave it to someone else go back to your job you know and this is what happens and then all of a sudden it just these voices get louder and louder and louder and louder you know Whereas it's about having absolute belief that you're on the right track, that you are doing the right things, and that it's simply a matter of just keep going with the process and it's time and patience. Yeah, absolutely. So we've got, you know, we talked about the letters. Yep. And, and then it's the fun bit, like when people are calling up and actually saying, I have got your letter. What do you want? <laughs> oh, my gosh. oh my gosh, there's another, there's another step. Like I don't just <laughs> so, so absolutely. Can we just get the deal? So, so look, having spent 25 years of my life in sales, and I suppose I'm still in sales uh, now because I have a, a business and I'm always looking to sell my services. But the point is that um, in sales, you are you are trained to prepare before you meet. It. Right, you train to prepare before you go and do your presentation, etc. So, my advice to everybody is. Think about what are you going to say when the inevitable phone call happens? Even if it's only 5% return on your letters, you're not sending out the letters to make Australia Post rich. You're sending out the letters so that you get a response so that you can then have a chat to somebody. So think about what it is that you're, you're going to say. And, and that's really about you know, building a relationship with people, uh, not going straight in to go, you know, how, you know I want to buy your property, how, how much, you know, because typically what will happen, you go, so I was going to say, shall we do a dummy call? We can do a, a dummy call. If you, we can do a dummy call if you want to. A five-minute dummy call. Okay, so I'm going to call. I'm 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 the homeowner of a property in Brisbane. It's a thousand square meters. I'm a little old lady, obviously. Um, and I ring up and I get this letter from Tony. I'm like, hello. Yeah. Hello, hello there, little old lady Cheryl. Uh, look, thank you so much for calling me. Uh, hey, what was it that prompted you to give me a call? I got this letter in the mail. It was all drenched, and it says that you want to buy my property. How much do you want to pay for it? Look, before I get into that, I just want to have a chat about uh, your property specifically. Uh, is, is that okay if we do that? Okay, but the agent told me it's $2 million. Are you going to pay $2 million? 
Oh, look, I need to understand a bit more about what's what's going on first. So, uh, look, so I'd love to have a chat to you about this. Look, is there, and so uh, can I just pause here? So the opportunity here is, uh, if you can, it's great if you can get face-to-face, -face, right? So you want to get face-to-face, -face, and why face-to-face? -face? Because right now, like we're doing a Zoom call, and so you can see people's body language, right? And so you want to see what's going on for someone, and you really don't get to the full sense of that unless you're face to face. So if we can, so, hey, look, I'd, lo I'd love to have a chat to you about your property. Uh, is there a time that I could come over and, and inspect the property? Oh, I don't know. I'll have to ask my son. He's in charge of the property side of things. Okay. Look, he's more than welcome to come there. When do you think you might get a chance to speak to him? Probably on the weekend after supper and then we'll have the grandkids over and then they'll have a bit of a play and maybe we can have a chat on Sunday. Yeah, terrific. Well, look, do that on Sunday. What I'll do is if it's okay with you, I'll give you a call on Monday and we can see if we're going to arrange your time. How's that sound? Okay. But are you going to pay $2 million? I just want to come and see the property first uh, and I want to see this this drenched letter, right? So the point, the point there is that... Um, you, you, you don't you don't want to go down the path of um, getting into the price uh, debate straight away, right, in the sense of most homeowners will, will like you've done, will say, give me the price. I just want to know, what are, you, what are you going to pay for this property? And you want to deflect, you want to defer, and hopefully that was valuable to people just seeing a little bit of that in action. But it's a case of, you know, because let's be honest, in order to, to provide a price, we do need to do a little more research on the property, right? You need to have a little more facts. I mean, you've got some facts, right? But you need to do a little more, uh, you know, fact finding before you can come up with a particular price. And so that's where now if someone keeps going at you talking about um, a price. Uh, what you can say there is, uh, look, is there a particular price that you've got in mind? Uh, and they'll say, no, no, I, I've never thought of it before, which we all know is BS, right? <laughs> but but they'll, but they'll say that. Right, the next thing that you can do is to ask for a price range. Yeah. Look, I appreciate you might have thought about it before, but is there a range that you could think of for your property, to sell your property for, right? And again, they mightn't uh, come at that. Uh, so then, you know, because we're trying to tease out of them some uh, price because the idea is to say, hey, listen, uh, I do this for, for a business. This is my business. Uh, and I, I'm going to pay you fair market value. Maybe in some cases I can pay above market value. But in order to help me so that I'm not wasting your time and my time, I'd really appreciate if you could give me a range to work on. Yeah. And I'd say as well, I mean, I noted that the little old lady has a son who sounds like he's involved in the property side of things as well in terms of selling or whichever. So I'd right. also recommend to ensure that he's there and if there's anyone else there that's part of the decision making so, so it's in, yeah absolutely so in um this is a business um tip for everybody but when you go and qualify uh, a potential um, new customer in business right there is a framework that i get uh, my clients to use and it's called champ c-h-a-m-p c-h stands for challenges Right. What are the challenges? Again, this is in a business setting, but where I'm going with this, the A is for authority. Who is the authority? Who is making the decision? Right. So if it's your son, if it's your daughter, if it's your neighbor, it doesn't matter who it is. Um, but who is going to be making the decision? Because we want to be talking to that person as quickly as we like, like when I say quickly, uh, as as fast as we can get to the decision maker. That doesn't mean that we're going to make it a, come to a decision straight away, but I want to talk to the person who's going to be having the, the decision, right? The, the M in the example I gave you talks about money uh, and then the P talks about priority and priority talks about, you know, when. When, are you, when, are you gonna, when do you want to buy this particular service? So you, you can take some of that framework that applies to business and look at applying it here in this instance. So you can, again, you can, if we, if we, Think about it, um, and I've, I've, I've not done this before, so I'm doing it live on TV, uh, but the CH challenges, you can start to understand around the property, what are the good things, what are the things that uh, you, you've enjoyed about the property, what are the things that you'd like to change. Again, you're just having conversation to start to bring uh, down the guard. Authority, we just talked about that. Money, we touched on uh, that side of things. Uh, we want to try and extract the price. Uh, P for priority. When? So if you're interested in selling, when would you be looking at moving? What would you be thinking about doing? Would you like to uh, perhaps rent back off me or would you like to go straight away or you want to go next year? Or you know, So there's some elements of that that you can incorporate in your conversations. 
Fantastic, Tony. Um, I'm aware that it's about 10 to 8. And I do want to talk about, like, yeah, I know you'll be covering a lot of this deal finding in um, an event that you have this weekend. Can you tell this us a little bit? Tell us a little bit about that, please. Yeah, so, so this Saturday I'm doing what I've called Property Unleashed. So this will be the fourth time that we've run it. So it's virtual. Uh, it's this Saturday. Uh, and so what we do is I go, what, what I do is I take you through a framework for sustainable change. So there's eight steps to sustainable change, and I'm going to take you through that because we all want to change. We all want to have a different outcome. And so what are the things that I need to be doing to ensure that I can, uh, can change and change for the better, right? And I want to have sustainable change. And so that's what we're going to go through on Saturday. After lunch, I'm going to go through deal finding. Uh, I'm going to get a little bit deep into deal finding and so giving people some tips and tricks and, and other things that they can uh, build on. We've talked about some of them here tonight. We'll build on them a whole lot more on uh, on Saturday. It's virtual. Uh, it goes all day. So uh, from 8 o'clock my time in Brisbane. So if you're in Sydney, it's 9 o'clock uh, in other parts of the country. So 8 o'clock till 4 o'clock Brisbane time this Saturday. Uh, and I think you're going to put the link into the show notes. Uh, dive onto the landing page, and if you're interested, uh, then uh, register, and I look forward to seeing you on Saturday. Awesome. And then outside of that, if people are interested to have ongoing sort of coaching with you, Tony, uh, what are, what are the, the options there? So, so there's two other ways. So one is uh, individually. Uh, and so individual coaching is my most expensive um, service that I offer because it's it's one-on-one -on -one time with me. And so if you're interested in individual coaching, the benefits of that is that everything is tailored for you. Uh, we do it in a private setting. Obviously, it's you and I. I have clients all around the country, so we're, we're doing Zoom calls. Uh, if you're in Brisbane, uh, you can come and see me in my office. Uh, but if you're around the country, don't worry, we do Zoom calls and I've been doing this for, for four years, as I mentioned uh, earlier. So uh, individual coaching is my most expensive offering. Uh, alternatively, if that's not for you or if it's a little bit outside of your budget, then group coaching. So we do group coaching and I've got a number of my group coaching uh, clients uh, here today and, and cheering on. I've got a few of my individual coaching clients as well. Um, but the group coaching is we do uh, a little bit of uh, individual coaching, not much, but we do more group coaching. And so we do it in a group setting. We meet every second Wednesday. So we're meeting uh, tomorrow night. So those of you who are listening, uh, go to bed after this because we're on tomorrow night. Uh, but we meet every second Wednesday night. Uh, there's also access to a whole learning platform. So we've got all sorts of videos, downloadables, all of the spreadsheets that I talked about before, the tracking spreadsheets. If you want to know what to say to people, you've got the, you can download those. If you want to, to, to know uh, some letters that you can send to people, we've got those as well. Uh, so we're really building out our online platform. Uh, it's relatively new, but we're really, uh, you know, really proud of the product that we're building for people. So, and it, so individual coaching. Uh, or group coaching uh, is the, the two ways. But look, if you wanted to buy before you buy, so to speak, swing along on Saturday. Uh, it's pretty inexpensive uh, comparatively. It's uh, like $79 for the day uh, with me. And, and we do a whole lot of stuff. So it's, it's you're going to be working. So for, have a good sleep Friday. You're going to be working. We've got workbooks. Uh, they're going to do live coaching, uh, go through things specifically for you uh, for a whole day. So it's an exciting uh, it's an exciting event, and uh, look, this is the, probably the last time I'll do it virtually. Uh, then we'll, we'll go back and do things, uh, hopefully, um, face to face sometime soon. Yeah, and I've I've been, I've been to that session before as well, and I've thoroughly and enjoyed it because I really like the whole the whole mindset behind property um, and, and getting back to. The essence of why why are we doing this? Because at the end of the day, you know, just with just with anything else like business, growing you know, growing a property business, it has its challenges, and you need to be able to have a really strong why to be able to move forward. And then, like I said, the things that you touched upon, getting really clear on your strategy, um, and coming up with this repeatable um, uh, process and system around finding deals and finding properties. Um, oh, look, and that's what it is because he, here's what happens. People get caught up in the emotion. And when you get caught up in the emotion, then you, you make wrong decisions or you, you procrastinate. And I see so many people. Uh, so, so take, for example, we're talking about having a conversation um, direct with someone. So many people will sit on a potential property. They'll do the FISO. 
they'll do all this work and they'll be so emotionally invested in that particular deal only to then submit an offer that's $400,000 apart. Yeah. It's a waste of time, right? And so the sooner, so this is about failing fast, failing forwards, uh, you know, but fail as fast as I can. So the sooner that I can fail something, then the mm. more time I'm going to have to spend on the one that will work. But if I get emotional about something and I, oh, look, I've been looking for so long for this property and I've got a scarce mindset and I don't think there's any other properties out there and this is the very last one in the whole wide world and I'm going to make this property work and I'm going to twist my FISO and bend it. and It's called emotion, right? Whereas when you treat this like a business, when you have a process and you become incredibly unemotional about it, that's not about um, being robotic uh, about this, but but it's about just going... This is my process. These are the things that I need to do and I need to go through this these steps and when I do these steps without emotion uh, and do them efficiently and effectively, then I will create phenomenal success for myself. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Tony. Like I said, you've got, you, you definitely got your, your fans to come on board today. They're out, they're out in force. <laughs> Tony right, is no. a super coach. I even haven't had a hello come through all evening <laughs> can, can but that's you, okay you are a superstar can, can you please please say hello to cheryl right i, I can't <laughs> I okay. bear it right so <laughs> uh, complex here. <laughs> hello. but my absolute pleasure cheryl i hope that that's been valuable to you i hope it's been valuable to the people Absolutely. that have uh, tuned in and obviously there'll be those who uh, haven't watched the live version they'll, they'll get to watch the replay but hey, look it's all all, all around um, create a process, repeatable process for yourself and just follow it. Just yeah. follow that process. And when you follow it consistently and persistently, success awaits you. It truly does. Absolutely. Thanks, Tony and Cheryl. And then at the very end, whoever you are, thank you. Hello back to you. Kerry, Kerry, Kerry Fuller. So, Kerry, I'm just looking at it here. So, Kerry, Kerry said hello, Cheryl. So, there you go. So, you've got a hello. So, yeah, oh. I, I feel the love now. Love it, love it, love it. Thanks, Tony. All the best for this weekend. And anyone that needs to get in contact with Tony, I think his email popped up before. Otherwise, he is on Facebook. Drop a private message to him on, on Facebook. Tony at TonyMeredithCoaching.com.au. Excellent. Thanks, Tony. We'll see you again. And everyone else, thank you for joining us. I hope you enjoyed that. Warren Buffett, if you can't control your emotions, you can't control money. Absolutely. If you enjoyed today's session and would like to listen on to the replay, please go on to my YouTube page, Cheryl Leong, not too hard to find, and you'll see all our past episodes of The Business of Property there. Um, like, subscribe, you know, get the notifications, and we'll see you next week on The Business of Property. Take care, everyone, and keep well. Bye-bye.